Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the West Wing Conversations videos. You know, it was the high school's first 10 year reunion, and everyone in that class wanted to go back to their 10 year reunion mainly because the dumbest fellow in their class had become a billionaire. He was all over the news. He was in Forbes and Fortune and Time Magazine and People Magazine. And he was the dumbest kid in their class. Not, not a nerd, but the dumbest kid in their class. So everyone went back to the 10-year reunion just hoping that he would show up. And sure enough, just before um, it was to start, this helicopter appears slowly lands on the uh, front lawn of the hotel they were holding the reunion at and out comes the dumb kid and everyone ran up to say hi and they, you know they didn't pay him any attention when they were in school they all run up to him and start talking to him and they basically what, what did you do how did you become a billionaire you know just short of saying you were the dumbest kid among us what happened and he said well you know uh, I, I invented this little computer chip and uh, I have them make it in, in um, China and it costs 10 cents to make and we sell them for $100 a piece and we just we sell millions and millions of those and they said yeah yeah and he said well that 10 percent just adds up so my point here is you don't have to be smart to get rich and what I'm learning, the UTS course uh, and club is only about five months old, barely five months old, but the major orange cone for most of you is money. And that's why I'm creating this special edition of the West Wing Conversations video. I want to try to make this more succinct and clear for all of you. So with that in mind, let's get going. Alright, so I'm titling this, How to Get Rich Now. You should be rich, and you can be rich, and you will be rich just as soon as you begin paying attention to what you love to do. You owe being rich to the universe, to yourself, and to your family. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, Money, which represents the pros of life, and is hardly spoken of in parlors without apology is in its effects and laws as beautiful as roses and please note that the Bible does not say money is the root of all evil it says the love of money is the root of all evil so the love of money is an orange cone now I define rich as simply not worrying about money. If you worry, then money is still an orange cone for you. But you won't see the money until you take the next step, the step of faith, and that's what scares you. The universe already took the first step. It planted a dream in you, what we call that celestial seed or that urging that's that's urging you to go forward so you must now act on that dream that inner urging that you feel and you must take the next scary step and that's the power of performing our dream tickets to learn how to proceed while being afraid so get used to fear see it as a doorway your own personal doorway to being rich otherwise it wouldn't scare you and fun and enthusiasm neutralize the fear the more dream tickets you perform the richer you become dream tickets teach you how to welcome fear because they present the doorways through which you personally and individually need to pass Dale Carnegie said People rarely succeed unless they have fun in what they're doing. And remember Joseph Campbell's advice. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. And also remember Ralph Waldo Emerson's words. 
Every wall is a door. This is what they meant. And this is why our dream tickets tackle fear in ever-increasing doses. You must walk before you run, and you must dip your toe in the water before you jump from the high dive. Now, when you're doing what you love, the universe provides whatever income you need. Now, yes, I know that's so esoteric, but that's why it's so elusive, too. And this doesn't mean you'll just barely get by and eke out a living. You will receive all you need to start, grow, and maintain what's about to unfold for you. It will provide for you and your family, plus all else that the universe has in store for you. Now think of it. The universe is abundance itself. Wouldn't any beach be just as expansive and glorious if it had only half the sand? And wouldn't a tree be just as beautiful with only half the leaves? That's why the universe and how the universe is so abundant. So why would it treat you any differently? Now here's what David Spangler, the American spiritual philosopher, says. Manifestation is an act of trust, in other words, a step of faith. It is the soul pouring itself out into its world, like a fisherman casting a net to gather in the fish he seeks. With each cast properly made, we will bring what we need to us, but first we must hurl ourselves into the depths without knowing just what lies beneath us. Doesn't that sound like steps of faith and our dream tickets? And this is why goals, setting a goal, is actually an orange cone that limits and prevents you from realizing your dream. How can you possibly set a goal and define what the universe has in mind for you? You can't. My simple little idea of teaching others what I learned about commodity trading grew to become an actual empire, teaching and serving over a million people in 89 countries with 200 employees in Grants Pass, Oregon and 300 employees in Southern California. I became the biggest in the world at it. Now, I never would have set a goal to do that. But some of my toughest decisions, my hardest lessons, and the greatest fears I ever went through involved being a businessman and an employer, not teaching commodities, which was easy and fun. So there's a lot more to your dream than you can possibly know now. Let the universe guide you because only it knows what's in store for you. Money is an orange cone, and that's why most folks keep crashing into it. They can't get it off their minds. They worry about it. They obsess over it, and therefore they never get around it. They crash into it. It's a mental version of the Chinese finger trap. You cannot escape until you relax and let go and stop focusing on being trapped. Focus on your dream instead. Now here's from club member John H., who is a business development specialist in Davie, Florida. He says, Ken, you're so right about not thinking of the money as you begin to do what you love. I have raised funds for years and have never gotten the early positive response that I'm getting now, with no questions about numbers because I am filled with sincere and contagious passion, not just pushing a good plan and a positive return on investment. I see, live, and breathe the vision with complete confidence, and it's catching. So you cannot buy your life star with money. You must pay attention for it. Do you want to continue paying for and buying orange cones? Well, you're always paying attention to something, so buy your life star instead. Henry David Thoreau said, 
The price of anything is the amount of life you exchange for it. When you perform your very first dream ticket, you overcome inertia and begin moving forward in first gear. The hardest gear of all to get through, by the way. So now keep at your dream tickets and they become easier and easier. Don't lose momentum that you gain. Your dream is just through the next doorway. W. Clement Stone said, That's why many fail, because they don't get started. They don't go. They don't overcome inertia. They don't begin. So, what are you going to pay attention to right now? Onward and upward.